This is a continuation of the GT5 Halcyon build. To follow along, head to elamscafeboutique.com. There you'll find a whole bunch of plan packs that include schematics, layout diagrams, and other high quality JPEGs. This video concerns a shielding cable. This is an old barbecue skewer and it is ideal for expanding the braid that I use for my shielding cable. The hookup wire that I use for my shielding cable is stranded and it has a high temperature insulation. As it's quite tough, I use a knife blade to strip the insulation. This is how I construct my shielding cable and also how I pair it to a resistor. I give myself a fairly generous length of stranded wire and I brace that against the resistor body. I leave just enough wire for two or three turns. Take extreme care to only bend the resistor lead where it meets the hookup wire. Don't give in to the temptation of bending the resistor wire where it terminates with the resistor body, else you'll shear it right off. You don't need a lot of solder and once I've cut off the leads I tidy it up with a small file or emery paper and that's because you don't want any sharp edges. It's important to insulate the bare wire here and that's to eliminate any chances of shorting out with the braid sleeve. Before applying any shield I lay the cable out and that's to determine its ideal length. I apply a little bit of solder and that's to ensure that the strands don't unravel. I cut off some braid that's longer than the hookup wire and now it's shish kebab time. I carefully feed through the skewer to expand the braid. In goes the hookup wire and then I smooth it all out. Yeah. 
then I cut the braid down to its ultimate length. Instead of mucking around unraveling the braid and using that as the ground termination point, I prefer to use a piece of solid core wire. I attach the smallest amount of solder that I can, leaving myself about 10 millimeters to half an inch of braid relief again sanding down any harsh edges. On goes an appropriate length of heat shrink and that eliminates any opportunity of shorting. And finally I apply a nice bit of heat shrink just to finish it all off. And that gives me a nice terminated shielded cable to the exact length that I want. Now is a good time to rotate the input jack 90 degrees just to make the lugs that much closer to the channel switch. I've got to sort out the switch and because there's no access inside the chassis I take it out and I mount it on the outside. And now I have plenty of room to work and I utilize sticky clay just to hold components in place for soldering. Again, you don't need to use too much solder. For this whole build, I've been soldering around a camera and I found it very difficult to see and I've used way too much, far too many times. So again, try not to use too much solder. I'm applying my pre-made shielded cable because once the switch is inside the chassis, there's no way I can get a soldering iron in there. The lugs on these switches are quite close together, so don't be afraid of bending them to your advantage. I'm putting this back in the chassis temporarily just so I can get the correct lengths of any ground wire insulation. With the switch all finished, I can put it back in the chassis and tidy everything up. This is the best order in which to install the shielding cable.
now it's time to lay the rest of the shielding cable and the questions arise what to shield and what not to shield or do you need to shield at all I think at the bare minimum you want any cable that is going to the grid of a tube to be shielded after that rule of thumb is any wire that is under two inches or five to six centimeters you're going to get very little benefit out of shielding having said that i've used a lot of shielding in this amp one thing to bear in mind is that every bit of shielding cable wicks away a tiny bit of high frequencies this is something that must be considered in your design process this is a particularly bright circuit so I'm quite comfortable using a lot of shielding cable because I don't mind losing some of the high frequencies. In fact, it's beneficial to this circuit in my opinion. Ultimately, the amount of shielding cable that you use is up to you and your own design preferences. I also found during this build that I had a couple of cables that were lying in less than ideal positions. The first was a cable that was lying right on the input jack and the input section is probably the most sensitive part of the chassis and so I moved this cable just to ensure that the chances of any unwanted noise getting into the input section are eliminated. One thing I noticed during this build is that this tube is associated with the tone stack and I have the signal running out of the cathode and it's very very close to one of the filament heater wires and I don't like that a heck of a lot because there's the opportunity for 50 cycle hum to be induced into the cathode and because I'm very OCD about these things and to avoid any unwanted induction into the cathode I decided to redo the orientation of the twisted pair through that socket. I'm really happy with the way the build's gone so far. This is a tricky section. There's a lot of soldering and there's a lot of opportunity for you to get too close to a component and accidentally touch it with a soldering iron. So take your time, protect those components where you have to. Thanks for watching, see you next time.